I have 8,000 subscribers. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. I'm not holding back, this is my life. Jimmy's approach to YouTube, I've never seen anyone like it. Like, what kind of psycho genius? <laughs> I just opened my very own charity. I've never ran a restaurant before. We will be donating $100,000 to Twitch streamers. Wait, what, 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 what? This is the most expensive firework in the entire world. Last one of you to leave this island keeps it. I just bought this house and I'm literally selling it for a dollar. I'm gonna spend the next 50 hours buried alive in this coffin. How about this? Let's let's give a thousand dollars away to someone who subscribes to your channel in the next five days. <laughs> Hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Boom! I bet you you gain a bunch of subscribers. But also make sure you give someone a thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Deal. We'll do that. All right. I thought it was coming from you, but it's coming from us. So we totally will. Fine. We will give. Yes. Totally fine. We will give a thousand. <laughs> So before we get into the interview, you heard him. You have five days from the time that this video was uploaded to subscribe, to be eligible to win $1,000. It would be great if when you did subscribe, you took a screenshot of the button and posted it to Twitter and tag Mr. Beast and us at Colin and Smear, just so we know. We did want to take a second to introduce ourselves if you're new here and give you some other reasons to subscribe outside of just the prospect of winning $1,000. I'm Colin. And I'm Samir, and this is the Colin and Samir Show, a weekly show where we cover the creator economy. So we talk about the trends that we're seeing, we talk about storytelling tactics, why certain things are working, and then we also bring on some of the top creators in the space to help build a roadmap for what it looks like to actually build a career on YouTube. So this is actually our second interview with Mr. Beast on this channel. Our first one came after he launched Finger on the App, and we caught up with him to learn about his vision for Mr. Beast in the future. What What is the ultimate goal? Well. I mean, if you want me to just be honest, my, my end goal in life is to open like a thousand homeless shelters, maybe 10,000. We'll see how it goes. So in this episode, we catch up with him, talk about some of his new channels like Beast Philanthropy, Beast Gaming, Beast Reacts, and also some of his new companies like Creative Juice. We talked to Jimmy about the projects that he's most excited about right now, what his main focus is, and the value of mentorship when it comes to growing as a creator. So without further ado, make sure you're subscribed, make sure to like the video, and here is our interview with Mr. Beast. So we were just curious, like what, what is your day-to-day -day focus look like? With all these new businesses, Beast Burger, mobile gaming, mm -hmm. philanthropy, looking at venture and, and financing creators, like what does your day-to-day -day focus look like? I, I try to keep majority of my focus on the, the main channel because that's what drives all of this. And almost everything I'm doing outside of my main channel is to make money so I can put it back into my main channel because it's just not profitable. Right? If we stopped up on the gaming channel, I'd have to dial back my main channel videos because they don't make money. I want to hit 100 million subscribers. I want to go well beyond that. Like I love Mr. Beast. It's my passion. And I've just hit this point where like I want to keep taking the videos bigger. But like the, the revenue is kind of like, you know, like whatever, the, relatively the same. And so like like the difference between a video spending a few hundred thousand dollars on a video or a million dollars, you know what I mean? Like it's not like I can just magically start getting 150 million views a video. So um, that's why I'm, I'm building these other businesses and, and revenue streams. It's just so I can funnel the money back into my main um, and grow the main as big as possible. You know what I mean? What about from like a personal excitement level? Is there one channel or one project right now that's kind of like your baby? Even though you're mm -hmm. focused on the main channel, you're like, nah, that's that's the one that I'm actually thinking about a lot. I mean, there's there's so many different ones we're running, but obviously the the plant to be channel because all the revenue generated on it goes towards our food pantry and literally feeding people. I like filming for that channel because like like on the main channel, they're big productions. It's like a million dollars most videos now, and it's like oh, it's so much stressful. There's so much on the line. Whereas like philanthropy, I kind of just like you know I show up and it's like I tr purposely try to keep it fun. Uh, because I'm not making any money off of it. So it's got to be fun or I'm not going to want to do it. And uh, yeah, I've, I've just really been enjoying running that. On the philanthropy side, can you explain a bit more about what the what the vision is there and what the goal is for Beast Philanthropy? The goal for Beast Philanthropy is currently we have a food pantry. We have a, a ginormous warehouse. Um, I'm, I'm showing it more in the upcoming videos. One thing that a, a lot of food pantries around us have is they don't have a large uh, freezer or a fridge to store large quantities of frozen goods. So we have like a $100,000 massive fridge that's like the size of the house. All these things that like a typical food pantry wouldn't have so we can like really go above and beyond when helping people. And it's, it's actually what our next video is about is there, there was this, this is a perfect example of what we'll be doing. Like there's a community 
that had a food pantry for the last 30 years, the, the woman that was running it got a little sick, they had to shut it down. And there's hundreds of families that depended on this for their weekly source of food. And now it's just like, it's done, you know, and, and no one's there. So we got news, uh, ironically, Darren, the guy who runs my food pantry saw it in the newspaper. And I, after I got done making fun of him for reading the newspaper, we, you know, we just stepped in and now every two weeks, uh, we just load up like two trucks full of food, uh, just with boxes of meals. And then we just replaced them. And now, you know, we just go there and we, um, people pull up with their car. We put like whatever, a uh, bunch of meals in the back of their car, close the truck for them because of COVID. And so now, you know, their, their food source for the lower income people there disappeared. And we were able to just come in and, and make it seem like nothing ever happened. Right. And so we're doing food drives like that all over the place, not just our local community. We're supporting a bunch of communities. And it's just really just like, figure out where we can add the most value. And that's what we're doing at the start, which is very expensive. Like it's hurtful for, for us because like uh, we have the Mr. Beast channel. We have all these other channels that are spending millions of dollars a month. And on top of it, I'm trying to run this charity as well, which is why I started the channel because I, I can't afford to do all this forever. So I need I need Beast Philanthropy to start generating revenue so I can keep this charity afloat because like the last eight months we've been running it, it's just been sucking directly out of my pocket, which is fine. That's why I did it because it's fun. So I need Beast Philanthropy to generate revenue so we can first uh, start covering as much as it's costing because we're, we're doing a lot of deliveries and and it's very expensive. And then after that, once we you know start making profit on the Philanthropy channel, grow and expand, like start servicing 10 communities, 20 communities, open up more food pantries and other parts. And hopefully in the future, experiment with the homeless shelter and not just doing stuff like generic, like, like, just like we did with YouTube. Like, why do people make the videos they do? How can you make them better? Like trying to deeply understand, like, what's the point of these things we're doing and how can we optimize them and, and really make sure we're doing as much good as possible. Did you grow up doing like philanthropic stuff? Has your connection to that is that relatively new as, as you've started to grow or is that something that you grew up involved with? Honestly, I've never really spoken about this. So it might take a while to articulate it, but like, no, I, I didn't have much money growing up. I saved up literally like three months just to buy a microphone when I was a teenager for, for YouTube. So I, we, did, we didn't have much. Um, but I think as uh, I started to come into money, for me, I just, it was just always this weird thing like, I, I enjoy working and I enjoy making videos and I enjoy making money, but it's like, what's the point? Like, I don't care to buy a mansion. I don't care to do a lot of these things that people do with money. So I always just was like, I, I didn't really have like an end goal. And it always made me feel weird. It's like, I'm devoting my life to like make YouTube videos and result I have make money, but it's like, what's the point? And and then I, I did that video where I gave a homeless man 10 grand and I started doing other videos where I help people. And I'm not like going to over-exaggerate it. It's just like, yeah, this makes me feel good. It's like, I'm, I'm kind of happy and if I had to choose between doing content that goes viral or, or doing content that goes viral while also helping people, I was like, I'm, I'd rather do the one that also just helps people because why not? When I'm older, probably in like my 50s or 60s, I just want to take all the money I make throughout my life. Maybe it's millions of dollars, tens of millions, hundreds of millions. Maybe it's a billion. I don't know. And then I just want to take all that money and I want to just do as much good as possible because why not? You know what I mean? Like, wh wh what's the point? You don't take the money with you when you die. And um, yeah, to me, that just like, a world where I make a bunch of money and I don't help people and then I die or a world where I make a bunch of money while helping people and then give it away and help people and then die. Like the latter one just seems a little cooler. Like I'd just rather live that life. I don't have like a, a better answer besides that. You know what I mean? How much of that mindset do you think has to do with operating in the town that you operate in, in the city that you operate in, uh, that you're like still in North Carolina? Mm -hmm. Is where you are important to you? Like, does it affect you think how you've grown your company? I would not be able to do a lot of the earlier videos we did, uh, or even a lot of the current ones in California, just because land's so much more expensive there. Like the warehouse I have and the land I have here probably would have cost 10x if I bought it in California, or at least 5x. And like I'm already operating at very razor thin margins and like constantly running out of money uh, and then having to wait for the next YouTube paycheck so I can keep going. And so, uh, yeah, no, I think being here where things are a little bit cheaper um, and I can have more space and, and you know, also just like, not as many people harass you here, like, you know, whereas in Hollywood, I'm sure like people, you know, there's paparazzi and all that other stuff. I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah. If I had to do it again, I would pick a place like this. That's a little more remote than like a, a big city, which is counterintuitive to what a lot of people would tell you. You mentioned like the channel revenue is what's going to help finance the program. Is that the only way that the that philanthropy is going to get financed? Or are you hoping that maybe other creators will write checks to the charity or like what are other ways that people can support, I guess. Yeah. Um, 
At the start, I want it to be revenue that I generate just until we really, really get our foothold. Things get messy when you get donations. We need to have clear transparency of where the money's going. We need to probably have like quarterly like, you know, logs where you can see it and all that stuff. And and we have it in the works, but I think as of right now, like, you know, the videos, I'm making the videos. So like the revenue generated technically would have gone to me and, and we're just funneling it into the charity. And so I think that's the simplest way to go about it at the start. Like it's a legit charity. We have it registered. That's why it took so long. We've been doing this for eight months, but like the paperwork and stuff takes forever to get approved. But yeah, in the future, donations, merch drops, ad revenue. I even have this cool concept that I think would be great and I think would do millions of dollars in sales for the charities. Like imagine a box that you could put in the trunk of your car and in the box was like hot hands a blanket, some non-perishable food that's nutritious, basically anything and everything a homeless man would need, you know, to just make their life easier. And like, it's a box you could buy and then just leave in the trunk of your car, like two or three of them, not even like a big one. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then if you ever see a homeless person on the street, you can just hand them the box and it would make their life probably five times easier, like exponentially better for them than if you just gave them a few bucks. And so I think that's something we could build on the philanthropy channel and then sell for a profit to raise money for our food pantry. And they would also do good. And so I don't just want to be generic and like, here's a shirt, you know, buy this and da, da, da. like, we'll do that. But I also want to like build cool things like that, that are kind of on brand. Um, and it's like a win-win all around. Man, that's a really good idea. Yeah, I think it's great. How, how is that not already a thing? Yeah, I can't, I was just thinking in my head, like, how has a government not thought about that? Or like, I mean, we live yeah. in Los Angeles where yeah. homelessness is a huge problem. Like that, how is someone in LA County not thought of that. That's a great idea. Exactly. Because like, you know, giving them money, you know, if they have addiction or whatever, not saying all, you know, homeless people do like, you you just don't know. And like, so a lot of people don't help them because they're worried of that. So like, this is obviously a no brainer thing, then no matter what, you can't just help them, you know? By the way, Darren made that video like your interaction with Darren in that video is so good. <laughs> I've, I've so, heard everyone's like, Darren yeah. stole the show. He's the, He's, yeah, he stole like, the show. <laughs> His look at the camera it's was so like good. iconic. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think like, as you mentioned, having people that you can trust uh, to help, you know, scale all of this stuff. The last time we talked, you had mentioned that you want to launch more channels. Philanthropy is, is obviously one of them, but we looked at your channel that's called don't subscribe. That's kind of the housing yeah. channel for all the yeah. different ones. Reacts gaming. These, these formats uh, are different for you because they are a little bit more what I'll call relaxed or simpler mm-hmm. productions. Um, but you're injecting like your own style into them. Why do you think launching multiple channels is the direction to go in this context mm-hmm. on YouTube rather than saying, Hey, let's, let's do a reacting format on Mr. Beast. Or let's do a yeah. philanthropy video on. No, I, I feel you. The the thing is, like you know, people come to channels for certain things, right? Obviously, I can't do gaming videos on my Mr. Beast channel because you know we're getting thirty plus million views a video. Majority of them probably don't play Minecraft. You know, what I mean, just statistically, they probably don't. So if I did gaming videos there, it just wouldn't make sense. It'd fragment the viewership, and it, you know, it'd hurt our returning viewers. We'd churn people. Same thing with reacts. So that's obviously, I think, you know, with the brain can piece together why all that stuff doesn't belong on the same channel. Better argument, and something I do fight with myself a lot, though, is that, like, what is the point of doing all those channels when you could just focus all the time on one, and that channel would obviously be more successful? But, it, like I said, it just always brings me back to, like, my main channel on its own just isn't profitable. I mean, like, the answer is I would just do smaller videos and upload more, but I just don't want to. You know what I mean? I want to keep pushing the boundaries, and I don't want to sell equity. I want to own 100% of my channel. So I got to figure out a way to make money elsewhere to fund it. And so what better way to make money than YouTube? You know what I mean? I've spent my whole life researching it. This is all I ever do. So it's like the Reactor channel is already starting to generate revenue. The gaming channel, we've been doing it for coming up on a year. has like funded so many main channel videos. It's crazy. Um, and we'll probably start more channels in the future. And like, that's, you know, I'm like, I, I don't care to buy a mansion. I don't care to buy a Lamborghini. I just want to make the best freaking videos possible on the Mr. Beast channel. And I don't care. Like, I, I'll start 100 businesses and I'll funnel all the revenue into it if I have to. Like, I don't care how much money I lose the video. I just want to make great videos. So the cost of making a main channel video for you has just continued to go up even throughout mm-hmm. all the success. Yeah. So much so that you're not Like, dude, actually... three years ago, we were giving away like $10,000 a video. Probably a year ago, it was probably $100,000 a video. I mean, like, a cheap video for us is like three, dollars $400,000. You know what I mean? Like, five houses video was just shy of a million bucks on a video. Uh, when we bought five houses and gave them away, um, yeah, they're just getting more and more expensive. <laughs> and like, but people like them and people are enjoying them. And like, 
don't don't get me wrong to people watching like money doesn't equal content i'm not naive right i don't i don't think that the more i spend the better it is but i do think the more you spend in a strategic way the better it could be if, if it's done right which is how we look at it we're not just spending the spin you know what i mean like We're putting our brain into it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some of the things you just said are really relevant to the announcement that happened recently around Creative Juice and investing in channels and investing in content. So I'm curious what, with that note around money does not necessarily equal content, you know, some Mm -hmm. of the conversations that we've been having when people ask us about, can you invest in a creator? You know, my initial thought goes to, well, you first want to see if the creator can make content with zero dollars, right? Like when you first started and you're sitting Mm -hmm. in your room coming up with these ideas, watching paint dry, reading a dictionary, like these are viral ideas that cost zero dollars. So at what point does a creator need an infusion of cash to actually grow? Like why come up with this thought about investing in creators? No, I mean, it's a, it's a great question. I'll be honest. I don't know all of the answers. It's kind of one of these things where we're going to figure it out as we go. I do know that like typically when a company is growing really fast, like in anything besides YouTube, like they usually pour gas on the fire to explode it. I mean, that's why you do it. You know what I mean? Especially if you have a bunch of competitors, that's how you break away. It's very common, but agreed. You're not just going to go to a guy with a hundred subscribers and da, da, da. like that doesn't make sense. I think where it would make the most sense is like, hypothetically, if you guys wanted to buy like a million dollar warehouse and, and you also wanted to experiment with hiring 10 people, you know what I mean? And so it's like, this would allow you to do it without like dipping into your reserves or like having to take a mortgage out on your house. Like it allow you to play a little risky and it's like, you know, if it doesn't work out, it's like not the end of the world. You know what I mean? Then on top of it, it's not just money. Um, you know, there's mentorship along with the investment and things like that. And uh, for Juice, like, it's not just me. Eventually, we're going to open it up for other creators. And so, like, if you guys want to start a fund, you know, and, and invest in creators and, you know, we'll give you two hours a week for and this much money for blank. And, you know, after you ROI your money, it drops down to this very small percentage or whatever. You can you can do whatever, you know, feels proper to you guys. It's just something that's going to exist. And it's kind of a no brainer. It is a little scary, but uh in five years, there's just no doubt in my mind that like something like Juice, a way for you to invest in YouTube channels is going to be big. And so it's going to happen sooner or later. So we might as well be the ones that do it. I really like that you, the way you're positioning that, you kind of said it similar about philanthropy. It's like, hey, let's launch it. We already know it's going to be a thing, but let's figure it out. Like let's, let's announce yeah. it. Let's state our intention and then let's actually do the work to figure it out. Well, it's basically there. Um, the thing is, we're going to just launch with my fund. But I hope one day, like everyone, like Marquez Brownlee or P- PewDiePie, I don't know. He doesn't seem like the super serious kind of guy. But if you wanted to, like you guys, like I think there's there's some real value in, in mentorship and stuff like that. Um, and, and I've coached a ton of people how to go from like, you know, 10,000 subscribers to hundreds of thousands. And, you know, you know, I used to talk to you guys a bunch. We don't talk as yep. much anymore. It's something I just enjoy doing is mentoring people. So it's also just a way to make it a win-win for, for everyone, you know? Someone asked us about Juice uh, in a clubhouse room. And what I said was that you you are doing this stuff anyway. <laughs> like you, yeah. you would call channels anyway and mentor them. So this is a really yeah. good way to like formalize. I literally showed a guy how to go from like 10,000 subscribers to 200,000 in like two months. Or you know what I mean? Right. I didn't, yeah. I got no financial gain out of it. Which I don't, it's not why I do it. I literally, I just mentor people because it's fun. I'm so ridiculously addicted to YouTube and data and analytics that like doing something like juice just is what I would naturally do if there's no money incentive, which is like, to me, always like the best type of companies, you know what I mean? Like YouTube, yeah. even if I wasn't making money, I'd still do it just because I love it. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's, I think they're win-wins. Are there any channels that as you were growing mentored you in this style, or is this something that you feel like because you're just so invested in YouTube, you started on your own? Um, I wish and my, my process was very long and drawn out. I mean, you can watch older videos uh, even before the show. I started when I was 11 and things really didn't click for the first six or seven years. So I was literally just me hammering away nonstop, just like had to self teach myself every little thing. And uh, I mean, for me, it was, the biggest difference is I, I, I met a group of like three or four people when I was like uh, 18, 19. And um, we, we just started having daily masterminds and we were all sub 10,000 subscribers. There's like four of us. And uh, every day we would roast each other's videos. We'd study things. We would, we would just like, that's all we did. Like we one time literally had an 18 hour phone call, just like studying YouTube. That's how obsessed we were. And then we all magically hit 100,000 subscribers around the same time. We all hit a million subscribers within like two months. Like we all grew together because when one person learned something, we shared it with each other. Mine wasn't so much mentorship as much as just, 
grinding away with a bunch of other equally clueless people until we just eventually figured it out. But I, I would say mentorship would be much more effective. Like if I if I talked to myself five years ago, I could tell myself five years ago how to be where I am now in like two years instead of five. You know what I mean? Right. Um, mm-hmm. Like I, I know everything I need to know. Like if you gave me a channel with 100,000 subscribers, I could grow it back to tens of millions. Uh, and way faster than I did before, because it really is like knowledge is power, you know? On that note, when you look at Beast Reacts, Beast Gamings, and Shorts, if you were to be able to invest in one of those, like if say, let's say those three channels mm-hmm. aren't yours, which one yeah. are you investing in and why? The hard one. Um, I mean, so let's take the the people that work out of Adam out of the equation. Like if yeah. we're just investing purely, because like I have some very talented people at all those channels yeah. and I wouldn't be able to do it without those people. But people aside, just tr- purely like the potential growth of the channels, I would say um, gaming's great, but like gaming does have a cap. You know what I mean? Like you don't see many gaming channels pulling three, 400 plus million views a month. But like there are people like Sniper Wolf, you know, pulling 600 million views a month on reaction. And and I feel like there's a lot of people in those high multi hundred million, which this is, is not how I'd run the investment fund whatsoever, but purely just on like potential. I think reacts, you know, in a year or two, we'll be pulling more views a month than gaming. Like I see gaming as like a 300 million view channel a month, whereas like reacts could get up to like 500 million views a month. That's so interesting. And and shorts, you came on the scene with shorts pretty early and it seems to be something. I, I was like the first person that I yeah. know that made a shorts channel. I made one and then literally the next week, everyone had one because I was just like, I don't want to upload these on my main channel. I was like, I'll just make Mr. B shorts. And then now they're just everywhere. It's kind of funny how much influence we have because I don't even know if that was the right decision. Like, why are we making shorts channels? I don't know. I just did it. And everyone's like, oh, he, know, he knows what he's doing. Let's all do it. <laughs> well, when you and I talked about it uh, in December, you had mentioned that it was pulling a, a much bigger international audience. And I thought that was really interesting, especially in India, because they had lost yep. TikTok. Uh, so I, yeah, to me, sure, that sure made a ton of sense. channels are horrible for, for money. Like they don't, they don't yeah. make money, but I, that's not why I'm doing it. Like, I think it's perfect for just growing your audience. It's, it's fun. And, and it's a little bit of a hedge. Like if short form does keep blowing up and growing, like you probably want like just like there's there's a lot of people that watch Twitch religiously that don't even know I exist, right? And but right. like H X, XQC, like they think he's like the the biggest person ever, you know, because he's large on Twitch. And like there are a lot of people who only watch YouTube that have no idea that XQC exists. You know what I mean? And so I think same thing with TikTok, same same thing with every medium. Like you want to at least be involved in some way because everything has these subset of people that like ninety percent of their social media is on that thing. And if you're not on that, you just don't exist on the planet to them, you know? So let's say that someone does have 100,000 subscribers, they're, they're tracking pretty well on YouTube and they want to pitch you uh, to get financing and mentorship. Like, what are the key elements that you're mm-hmm. looking for or that you, you think make that channel? Like I said, that, we'll, we'll figure okay. all that out when it comes. I don't, I don't know. And honestly, I'm probably going to make mistakes on the first few. I just don't know. Like, we have our data that will predict how well they'll do and stuff like that. But my goal isn't to just squeeze people dry and like, you know, give them bad deals. Like I genuinely want to create win-wins. And so what a win-win's like, don't know. To me, you know, it might seem like, you know, after IRY drops down to a low percent or whatever, um, yeah, I know that without a doubt in my mind, if I'm mentoring someone, like there's a high probability I'll double their viewership, you know what I mean? And, right. and that I can provide a lot of value. So it's really just figuring it out as we go and just creating a win-win. And like, I have plenty of other revenue streams. It's not like I need this to like, you know, whatever. Right. Um, so I'm just trying to have some fun and, and create a platform for, which by the way, it's, it's juice isn't mine. We have a lot of people involved in it. Um, but yeah, create something that could be cool. Taking the financial side out of it, though, when you identify a channel that you want to mentor or that you're interested in, are there some shared characteristics of those channels? What is it that sort of tips you off to think, oh, this is a channel that I think has a lot of upside. This is something I'm interested in. I would rather work with a channel that knows how to make great content, but doesn't really know how to package it well and, and doesn't really understand like, you know, like, you know, how to how to grab the view in the first minute, how to like, you know, hold them throughout, but the videos are just naturally good. It's much easier to teach them that than teach someone who has great titles and thumbnails, uh, but just horrible videos, how to do well, Mm -hmm. right? Because usually it's like for those people, the ones that uh, already make great videos, it's just teaching them some retention strategies, helping them clean up the video, and then showing them how to make an interesting title and thumbnail. Like that isn't too, too hard. You know, it can be learned in a few months. But the other way around, I mean, like some people, man, it takes years for them to learn how to make a good video and be good on camera and that type of stuff. So it's much more of a grind. When you grow 
these channels, like what we've seen you do is obviously, you know, you rolled out your own products. Beast Burger uh, is a great example of that. Now, Mm -hmm. you know, finger on the app. So it does seem like as you, as you start to grow, the opportunity is to build your own businesses that you can promote through the videos. Of course. Um, Yeah, of course. Right. Uh, So I'm just curious for you, like, it seems like now with, uh, with finger on the app two that just rolled out recently that you're now moving into Mm -hmm. your own mobile gaming studio, uh, at least from what it looks like on on Twitter. Uh, Mobile games are the way to go. They're infinitely scalable, right? Like we have other companies, but at the end of the day, like, if I have a physical product company, then I sell a million of them. We have to build up the supply chain. We have to figure out logistics, stuff like that. Million downloads, you could do that in the next minute. It doesn't matter. Like it's infinitely scalable. Mobile games software is like in the perfect world, that's where you are. It's just so much better. Like once you're done, you're done. You know what I mean? Until the next update. It's great. And that aside, I just I love making, you know, amazing apps and stuff like that. So we have some really big ones down the pipe. I, I really I want to get to a world eventually where like every quarter we're just dropping like an insanely big game. Like finger on the app, in my opinion, isn't that great. Like it's cool, but it's relatively simple. Like the practice mode, there's there's not really much playability. It's like it's a cool concept, but it's a gimmick. You know what I mean? That's not a replayable app. But the the next one I want to drop is it's gonna be huge. I can't say because it's it's such a big app it's gonna take another six, seven months to develop. But uh it's it's going to be great. And I think this one will have some pretty good longevity. And then I would just want to keep following them up with bangers. Because at this point, honestly, building apps costs less than some of my videos, <laughs> which is kind of funny. That's you crazy. I mean? it, it, genuinely. Uh, you know what I mean? Like you can build a really kick-ass app for under a million dollars. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, I really think that's the way to go. And like, you know, if people, any YouTuber, you know, if an app's willing to pay you X amount of money for a sponsorship you could probably generate that much plus a lot extra if you owned an app, you know what I mean? And so imagine if you just, you know, it was on brand and stuff like that and you just promoted that in your videos instead. It's, I I think it's going to be very interesting. Does that feel like the signal for a creator? Like if they start doing a ton of brand deals with mobile app companies, is that the signal to say, maybe I should start my own mobile app? Well, I don't, uh, maybe, I guess on the flip side, I'm still going to do brand deals with them just because I need help funding my videos. And on the same token, like, for if like if someone was a million subscribers and applied that logic they probably couldn't afford to fund the app you know what i mean so if you're at at our point yes i think for a lot of you know more medium-sized people probably not and i also am fortunate enough to have like a great team to help me with my youtube channel and great team to help with all this other stuff if you're more like a lone creator with just like an editor and a camera guy like it's it would probably be very hard to juggle all the things you're juggling so yeah with a grain of salt, yes. I guess like it's a similar thought to Beast Burger. Like that could have been a partnership with, you know, some big chain, right? Oh yeah, we had some big chains that uh, that. So we wanted to partner with some restaurants, and none of them were interested because you know everyone saw how well Travis Scott did and stuff like that. And so then you know we're just all right. We'll just launch our three hundred restaurants. Now we're up to four fifty. We should be in the thousands by the end of the year. And uh, yeah, now now they want to partner with us and they they want to drop a burger. And it's like, well, now it doesn't make any sense. I have my own restaurant. Like I don't want to put anyone on blast, but we've had people like you know want want us to drop something on their menu. And it's like, why? I have my own menu. You know what I mean? I I wish I could say, but I I don't want to ruin what we have coming up. We have some big drops on the beef burger menu coming up. Um, I mean. Let's just say, like, we're going to be collabing with a lot of YouTubers. And if you're a big YouTuber and you want to drop something on our, our menu, let me know. But we'll just <laughs> put it that way. I think people are going to be really surprised with what we're about to do on Beastburger, and it's going to get pretty crazy. I think one of the interesting things about you is that you also have a really unique management side in Night Media, mm-hmm. like one of the most well-known that's doing a lot of things with you. I would like to know, like, yep. h- how do you and Night Media interact on like a week to week basis, you and Reed, like what does that look like? Uh, if you could take us behind yeah. the scenes of what it looks like for uh, a creator like yourself to interact with their management company. Yeah, it's it's basically, I wanna sit here and I wanna obsess over YouTube videos 90% of my waking hours. I just wanna wake up and obsess over how I can make the best videos possible. It's like, Reed, I want you to wake up and obsess how these businesses keep growing, innovating, being creative. And so it's usually just, uh, that that's that's our relationship and usually when i call them i'm just like innovate more push them harder it's like <laughs> what do you mean do we need to wait another two weeks for the mr beast cups i want them now it's usually him just doing things and then no matter what he does i'm just like not good enough better and um and i just push him really hard and i'm grateful that he can take it and and apply it 
but yeah, for the most part, I want him to like run all that stuff. So I can just focus on make the best videos possible. And it's, it, I'm grateful for, for night media. It's very helpful. So it's basically how it works is that everyone on your staff, like the Mr. Beast team is basically just on the content and production side. And then you let night media handle the the other stuff. Yeah. for the, Well, so like um, Beast Burger, I mean, we have a crazy amount of people that work on it that obviously aren't a part of night media, like, you know, the call centers, QA, people going out and reaching out to restaurants. Um, for Beast Games, we're hiring a CEO that's going to build a whole team for our coming up app and the one after. And then um, our other company, which I guess I'm not supposed to mention, uh, we're, we're about to close on a really great CEO for that. So um, cause even they can't run all these companies like in depth, you know what I mean? Like there's just so much and, and I have very high standards for everything that's going on. So it's, uh, getting CEOs and building the companies up. So I'm curious, you say you want to focus on making the best YouTube video and that's where you want to stay mm-hmm. in your wildest dreams. What is your best YouTube video? What have you not done yet? Oh, well, I mean, ah. I've never had anyone ask me that. Like, what's the craziest thing? I mean, like, dude, if, if I could do a last leap for a billion dollars, I would. That'd be funny. You know what I mean? Or, um, <laughs> that'd be funny. No, that'd be a little excessive. I, if I had a billion dollars, I'd rather use it for something better for the planet. I don't know. I mean, last leap circle on the moon, last leap circle on Mars. I mean, they can get as big as you want. I don't care. I'm crazy, you know? <laughs> Is that like brainstorming or that mastermind process still in play? For you as someone who's coming up with ideas like are you in practice on a weekly basis just working through ideas or how does the ideation process continue to get bigger and bigger i i work very well with inspiration i used to like just flip through a dictionary like an hour a day and just like find random words and you know i'd be like oh what's that word flower uh can i give my girlfriend a hundred thousand flowers on valentine's day oh that sounds kind of cool because like i just take in random words i see what pops in my head and like so i just i love taking in inspiration um, and that's, that's always worked very effectively for me. It's really just, you know, I, I pay people to like, give me tons of different things to get inspired off of. And my brainstorming is just like getting as much data as possible and as much stuff and having people collect it and hand it to me. And then I just look at it and I just see what pops in my head and, and see how it inspires me. I mean, honestly, we have hundreds of video ideas. I like, you know, so I don't do it as much anymore. I used to brainstorm an hour a day, but it's at this point, it's kind of overkill. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm happy. I just want us to keep pushing the boundaries and innovating and improving. And like, if you're not improving, you're dying. I firmly believe that. And so every video on every channel, I just want us constantly getting better. And, you know, we have some really great people here that are making sure that happens. Outside of YouTube, what's like the next platform that you're excited about? Is there is there another platform like TikTok or Twitter or like the second platform that you're like, that's where I like I mean, I, I like all of them and they have their use. Like I'm not one of those people that's like YouTube superior. Everything sucks. Like I understand why everything exists at the end of the day, man. Like, you know, Google, YouTube owned by the same company. How many Google does a lot of searches, you know, right to YouTube. YouTube is on Android. Lots of people use Android. I mean, it's just like the bigger the internet gets, the bigger YouTube gets. There's some way you could tie the correlation of the growth of the internet to the growth of YouTube, you know, and gaming viewerships doubled in the last two years. So insane gaming viewership on youtube at doubling like that in two years like it's growing so fast and people just don't even realize it and so i think in five to ten years like youtube's going to be multiple times bigger than it currently is and it's already massive yeah so i'm i'm incredibly bullish on youtube and i want nothing more than just to be the biggest youtuber i possibly can so last time we talked you had you'd had this vision or you, you painted this vision for us of having a company with 40, 50 YouTube channels. And you were tracking mm. to, towards that. You're launching not only your own channels, but one thing that was really impressive to me was like seeing Carl's channel launch and thinking yeah. about, you know, the other characters. So how is that process coming of, of well, that, Carl's channel is his. So um, that's his own channel. Um, but yeah, like the, the Mr. Beast channels and stuff like that. It's, it's coming along well. I do think like in two years, so there'll, there'll probably be 10 plus Mr. Beast channels. What I need is more friends. You know? Cause like, <laughs> I can't just expect Carl, Chris, and Chandler just to be in everything all the time. Um, you know, they're down, but at some point they need time off. I, I love to push myself in a perfect world. I'm working 10 hours a day, every single day of the week. If I could find like one other friend, I think that'd be great and allow us to underload them. Cause I already asked a lot of them. It's hard to find someone to join our squad. Cause you, uh, it's like, it's not fake. Like you genuinely, you have to be able to hang out with us and get along. We have to like really think you're funny. Like, and just, you have to be able to vibe well with us or it just doesn't work. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, like 50 hours buried alive in a coffin. Like we borderline spent 50 hours together. Like, you know, you, we have to like each other and it has to be genuine or it just won't come across. So I've been looking for another person to join the squad. 
it for like a year now. <laughs> Still haven't really found it. Yeah. That, and it feels like the criteria for that is just authentic connection, right? Yeah, exactly. Like Carl is where he is because like Chris and him were just really good friends. And right. like Chris mm-hmm. just didn't want to film without him. And it's like, okay, you know what I mean? It's not like it was like strategic. It was just kind of like, yeah, we like him. He's cool. We all get along well. That's it. That's, that's literally our criteria to to be a, well, however you describe it. Like, uh, to me, it's just a friend, but to people watching, I guess like a person on the show or whatever. I think one of the funniest moments for me from the coffin video is just you getting out and how chill it was. Like everyone was just like, yeah. wow, you smell really bad. <laughs> And then it was like, and then you just looked at the camera and you were like, we really do this stuff. Like this is real. And, and I don't know why it was such a raw moment. And then the video just kind of, you know, ends and you're like, wow, that actually was how it was. Like, that's how it happened. Uh, and I don't know, for me, I thought it was just an amazing moment. You didn't like the part where I said, get that camera out of my face. And I, threw my shirt out of- <laughs> I just thought like the whole ending of that video was so real. Like it was not sensationalized in a, in any sort of way. It was just like, this is what it'd be like if you were standing there. So I, yeah. I personally thought that was really cool. I appreciate that. The best comment on the coffin video was everyone's forgetting that the fly also survived 50 <laughs> hours in the coffin. <laughs> Imagine, yeah, that's funny. Imagine that fly, like somehow we had, like, we had a camera that followed it around and on a separate channel, it's like, uh, a fly that would be in so the funny. coffin in the thumbnail and he uploads his POV. And you're just in the background. Yeah, funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so from now until like this time next year, 2022, you know, you, you've, you've launched so much stuff since the last time we talked and it's like we in, in our office, just constantly reading headlines about stuff that you're, you're doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm like yeah. getting lost in the headlines. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's like, Honestly, I don't even think that many people noticed we launched Peace Philanthropy. I'm just like, yeah, here's my charity and everything. And, um, and I was like, oh, cool. It's Mr. Beast being Mr. Beast. At this point, I don't even, like, people are just so used to us doing big things that it's it's kind of funny. I, I do think, though, that that box idea, I keep, I can't get that out of my head. The box idea you had is actually very revolutionary mm-hmm. across just the entire problem of, like, homelessness. So th- I, I agree. I, I Dude, think- we got all kinds of good stuff. Like, I do. I just need great people. We're always hiring like every, every company, every channel, everything. I mean, there's, we're probably trying to hire dozens of people at the moment. I just need great people. You know, I, I have great people currently, but I just need more great people to, to help bring this stuff to life. You know, like working in retail or, or being cashier, there's millions of people or truck drivers, things like that. But like when it comes to people who have made YouTube videos at a high level, very innovative and like kind of understand all these things, like there's very few people on the earth. So it's like, there's not, many people to like really pick from because it's completely different than television and most production. Like we purposely use bad cameras. So it, you know, it it feels more real. I think 4k looks like, you know, you're a TV show and there's like so many things that like people from traditional media think is like weird and they just don't get why we do what we do. And they're like, you know, this, this video took you like 40 hours to film, but like, if you would have just scripted it, you could have filmed in like five hours. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to script it. That's not how you do YouTube. And they're like, but that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, well, sorry, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, those types of conversations. What is your biggest pain point then when scaling and growing up? It's just finding great people. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, it's like, I know how to run a channel. I know what will do well. Um, and like I said, it's just really like getting consistently, getting great people in to like kind of help with this stuff. Cause it's not possible on my own. You know what I mean? I'm way beyond my limit. Like if you took all my people away from me, you might as well just kill all the channels, but the main channel, <laughs> you know what I mean? You just brought up that like some traditional media people don't really understand exactly why you're doing what you're doing. Now we're also yep. starting to see celebrities and traditional media people coming on to YouTube. What's your take on that? Matthew McConaughey, Brie Larson, Ryan Reynolds coming Come on, on over. I mean, like I'm not one of those persons that's going to be like, Oh, they're trying to invade our platform. It's a net positive for all of us. I mean, they're just bringing their fans. Like as much as we want to say their mediums are dying or whatever, they still do have fans. You know what I mean? And and by coming over here, they're just bringing them onto the platform. And um, I don't see any negatives to it. Like, come on over. You know what I mean? Bring more viewership. I love this platform. If you could collaborate with one of those celebrities or any celebrity, whether they're on YouTube or not, who would you put into one of your videos? Yeah. Well, of course, Elon Musk. <laughs> I mean, Elon Musk is the GOAT. I love him. Like, I, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who I would collab with. <laughs> do you so, have an idea? Do you have an idea ready for him? Um, put me in space or something. I don't know. It depends <laughs> how weird he wants to get. That's great. 
you have anything else that you wanted to uh, touch on? No, I just, I just think like YouTube's here to stay. It's only going to get bigger. And like, it's crazy that like five years ago or whatever, like when I was really going all in, like people were like, Oh, it's not stable. It's a fad or whatever. But I, and there's still people to this day that, that say that, but it's like, clearly like it's growing crazy fast. Even if it's stalled, YouTube would still be around for a decade or two. You know what I mean? Even if it started to slow descent, you know, it's like, it's not just going to disappear overnight. It's like, it's a great sustainable way to build your businesses and build a channel for the long run. As long as you're innovating, you're adapting, you're, you're keeping up with it. It's, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not like TV is any more stable. You know, if you want to be a YouTuber more than you want to breathe, like, I don't care what anyone says, just make it happen. You know what I mean? I love that. Cause it, it does feel like there is this, uh, I mean, there was that thread going around on Twitter that like so many kids want to become YouTubers. And I think there's a fear Good. that that the platform is oversaturated. Does that feel, does it feel like that to you at all? Or it's just, if you're a startup creator, you want to start tomorrow, you can still do it. Again, if, if you're on the fence, you know, whatever, you know, just do it for fun. Don't try to make a career out of it. Um, but if like you, you want it so badly that like, you just can't envision a life where you're not a YouTuber. It's just like, you love it. You're very passionate about creating. You love making films. Like, then yeah, I, I 100%, I think you can make it. You just got to be relentless. It's, it's not going to just happen overnight. You know what I mean? People train to be doctors for six years. You know what I mean? Just like anything else, um, just train, train and, and be relentless. Here's the thing. If if any, if people knew what I know about how to, if you do well on YouTube, and I'm not saying like, I you know backdoor tricks or anything. I'm just saying, I, I know how to make a video where people want to watch it and where it's interesting. Anyone, literally anyone could, could make a good video with the knowledge I have in my head. It's like, it's just knowledge. You know what I mean? I could start a zero subscriber channel and get it to a million subscribers just because you just know what to do. And so really like if you're that small YouTuber that like wants it, like how are you learning? You know, if you're on a three-year journey, how can you shrink it to a one-year journey by studying YouTube videos three times as much every day or getting a better quality source of YouTube information? What are you studying? Like, or how are you improving? How are you practicing? There's logical ways to go about it just like with everything else. Uh, just most people don't. And they usually just kind of make the same, you know, like average videos over and over again, don't really improve much, don't study much. And like, again, I'm not shaming on that. There's Do it. You know what I mean? But like, that's not going to fast track you to where you want to be if, if you really took it serious. So it really just depends how serious you're taking it. Love it. I think cool. it just reinforces to me the mentorship angle, mm -hmm. like a hundred X. Like I think what you're doing and thinking about the mentorship side is so important. Here, I, I got, let me hit you with this because okay, I know we're wrapping up the yep. video. If you're watching this right now, hit the subscribe button right now. Click the subscribe button. I want to prove something to them. I don't know if you guys like really push them. Out. How about this? Let's, let's give a thousand dollars away to someone who subscribes to your channel in the next five days. <laughs> hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Boom. I bet you, you gain a bunch of subscribers, but also make sure you give someone a thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Deal. We'll do that. All right. I thought it was coming from you, but it's coming from us. So we totally will. Fine. We will give. Yes. Totally fine. We will give a thousand. <laughs> I, did this, uh, I was on Quackity's uh, game show. And I did the same thing. <laughs> Mr. Beast just makes me lose money when he comes on. <laughs> well, it's a running right. joke. I have with a lot of people when I'm on their channels. I make them lose money. Uh, but I enjoyed the interview. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, this was really yeah. fun. And, and yes, uh, one person watching is going to win a thousand dollars, courtesy of Colin and Samir. Uh, if you subscribe, if you subscribe, subscribe. within the next five yeah. days. So thanks for watching our interview with Mr. Beast. We hope you guys enjoyed that. If you like these types of interviews with creators, we do have more lined up for the future and we have some in our library that I think you guys would really enjoy. So make sure you are subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed yet, like Jimmy said, you have five days to subscribe and be eligible to win $1,000, again, from us. From us, not from Jimmy, from us. From us. That's from us. Jimmy's idea, our money. And lastly, if you want to hear about what we are up to with our brand new company, Publish Projects, you can put your email in on the website, publishprojects.com. Our first project that we are launching is a newsletter for the creator economy. So if you want to stay up to date about news and trends and everything that's going on in this world of creators, make sure to sign up, put your email in, and we'll be sending out emails very soon. Samir, roll the outro. Okay. I think I could do that. Oh.